Well, there's certainly a disconnect between what's happening in the stock market and what's happening on, on Main Street. So, yes, we are actually, we do think this is probably a bear market rally. Um, you know, we thought that last year things were expensive. Earnings declined last year. Markets still rallied. And then, obviously, this year, earnings are going to take a massive hit. And we also won't have as much buybacks to support the market, and yet markets seem to have rallied again. So it seems like the market's better on a V-shaped recovery. There are a lot of technical factors one needs to keep in mind. For, for instance, you've got central banks like the Swiss National Bank who are just buying equities basically as part of their efforts to reduce the Swiss franc, and they actually don't care that they're losing... Seemingly, they don't care that they're losing money on, their, on those investments. So there are some things... There's monetary policy which is pushing up markets, and we're aware of that, and we're aware of the um, old saying, don't fight the Fed. But um, absolutely, the underlying fundamentals do not warrant such a sharp rebound in stocks. And so, therefore, if you're going to base on fundamentals, it does seem like it's a bear market rally. Right. You like the China markets, though. Why? Because you talk about a disconnect, and seemingly post-COVID-19, there perhaps could be a disconnect between China and the rest of the world, because we have to see how the whole COVID-19 scenario plays out. But could China be in a less attractive position on the global stage when it comes to globalisation post-COVID-19 than what it was beforehand? Well, there's no doubt that um, the, the, the rest of the world is going to impact China. It's external demands that we actually see as a major risk. Obviously, we're all well aware that China's actually moving to a more consumption-led economy. So, therefore, um, perhaps it should have less um, dependence on the on um, the rest of the world exports than it once did. The big thing that we think China's still got up its sleeve is we think there's there's lots of room for far more aggressive policy policy interventions than what we've seen so far. Um, its fiscal its fiscal stimulus to GDP is really really um, slow. It's probably by our estimate about five percent, which is tiny when you compare it to the rest of the region. For Australia, for example, estimated fiscal stimulus to GDP is twenty seven percent. So there, it does seem like there's a lot of room in China to, to increase fiscal stimulus. We, we think they've, got the, they've certainly got the means to do it. And we, we've seen what that actually did for the economy coming out of the GFC. So China, we'd like to, as a long-term fundamental um, investment proposition, and we do think that there's a lot more to come there. And we've seen what fiscal stimulus can do for markets.